John Batterson Stetson was born in Orange, New Jersey on May 5th, 1830. He was born in, uh, up in New Jersey. He was raised in a, a hat factory that his father owned there and he never had any formal education in his life. His mother taught him and his siblings up over the hat factory at night and he was a very good learner because he was one of the most astute businessmen that you could ever want to see or know. John was the twelfth of thirteen children. He worked in the hat making business with his father until he was diagnosed with tuberculosis in his early thirties. His doctor predicted he would only have a short time to live. John decided to travel to the American West, afraid this would be his only chance to see it. His first stop in his adventure was St. Joseph, Missouri. John obtained a job in a brickyard. He soon became manager and then a partner in the business. And then one day, the Missouri River flooded, washing away his investment. Half a million bricks, ready to be baked, melted and washed away downstream. Looking for a new career, John tried to enlist in the Civil War. Due to his health, he was rejected. Soon after, he was invited by a group of men to go panning for gold in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. On a rainy night, the group was having trouble finding shelter. One of the men remarked, too bad there isn't some easier way to make tent cloth. Stetson said, there is, by felting. Instead of explaining how to make it, he demonstrated. Instead of making it into a shelter, he made it into a big hat. His hat had become a topic of small talk throughout the gold mining fields. One day while in the mining fields, a cowboy came up to John and asked to try his hat on. John let him. The cowboy liked the hat so much that he offered John $5 for it. John accepted the offer. This sale inspired John to return to the hat making business. With the $100 in his pocket, he bought the tools of his trade, rented a small room in Philadelphia, and began once more to make hats. He made a replica of the hat he sold in Colorado. He shipped a sample along with an order form asking for orders to various stores. This was a make or break move. Turns out it made him. The orders then started pouring in. The hat, called the boss of the plane, became popular with the Texas Rangers, U.S. Marshals, and famous people like Buffalo Bill and the Lone Ranger. Due to its popularity, any hat, any style that John made was called a Stetson. The word Stetson was symbolic for the word hat all over the world. Many people go into a store they didn't ask for a hat, they asked for a Stetson. Within a couple of years, the factory was striving with 4,000 employees. This afforded John the freedom to accept an invitation from his friend Henry DeLand to spend his winter in Florida. It was upon this visit that John fell in love with the land. Not only was the warm climate good for his health, but he enjoyed the land's quaint town-like feel and picture-perfect streets. This was the first of 20 winters that John B. Stetson lived in the land. Henry DeLand established the Land Academy. Due to the freeze in 1885, he could not continue to financially support the school. He couldn't support the school because he was trying to keep his promise. And then in 1885 also, the city suffered a very bad freeze, the whole county did. And uh, Mr. Stetson, or Mr. DeLand rather, suffered very hard financially in this because he had promised anybody to come here that uh, bought land from him that if they had to leave for any reason within two years, he'd give them their money back. Well, a lot of people left because there was no way for them to make a living. Their oranges were froze. There was no other, no other kind of work around here. When John B. Stetson visited the campus in 1886, he was so impressed with its present and future needs that he responded by financially supporting the academy. Stetson raised $13,000 to build a much-needed dormitory in the attractive three-story building named Stetson Hall. He built and donated buildings such as Elizabeth Hall, named after his second wife. He built the women's dormitory and the library. The academy continued to prosper. This was uh, for Mrs. Stetson. Uh, she was, her name was Elizabeth, of course. And this was, this was built for her. It was built to look like the uh, Independence Hall in Philadelphia. After naming John Stetson to the board of trustees, Henry DeLand, to thank him for his contributions, suggested that the name be changed from DeLand Academy to John B. Stetson University. Because of a thriving university, DeLand's population grew by leaps and bounds. 
Besides building up the university, John built a grand residence in the land. In 1887, he built an 8,500 square foot house for his family on a 300 acre orange grove. The grounds included an 800 square foot schoolhouse for his children and an alligator pond. The father pool in the background was his alligator pits. And when I was a kid, we played in these all the time. They were very little water in them, especially the one closest to us. It evidently had a hole in it someplace that water would not stand in it. There he is laying on the shore. That's old Pompadour. He wasn't too big. He looked like he was maybe 10, 11 foot long. Having lived up north where electricity was available, John wanted electricity in his grand home. It was installed by none other than Thomas Edison, his friend and fellow Orange, New Jersey native. But this meant in order for his home to have electricity, the land had to have an electric company, making the land the first city in Florida to have electricity. The Land Electric Light Power and Ice Company. Mr. Stetson was one of the major stockholders in it. And it sufficed here until 1924. Over the years, John and Elizabeth Stetson had many famous visitors, such as John Jacob Astor, the Mellons, the Vanderbilts, Henry Flagler, Baron Frederick DeBerry, President Grant and President Cleveland, King Edward VII, the then Prince of Wales, and last but not least, Thomas Edison. From Mr. Flagler, the man that built the railroad and was a oil magnet. From those names, you may have recognized Baron Frederick DeBerry, who founded DeBerry, Florida. In addition to Mr. DeBerry, Thomas Edison also settled in Florida in the city of Fort Myers. For a man who thought he wasn't going to live for very long, he certainly accomplished many great things. The legacies he left behind are many. A thriving hat company, whose name is still remembered today, allowed him to be generous to support the revered institution of Stetson University. Electricity for the land and then Florida, and most importantly, he was a great example to never give up or give in to what someone else says is your destiny.